I think I look back on it with a kind of a nostalgia, right? But it was tough. My mum was single, so white woman, grandbaby, single. Uh, we'd just come from a refuge. Uh, this is a classic kind of a town estate. We didn't have a car, so to get into the middle of town was a bus ride. If you missed the bus, you know, you'd be kind of stuffed. So um, while I have memories of having kind of adventure, we would go climbing in the fields around the back and catching grasshoppers and so forth. It was also quite a feeling of being locked out and a bit lost. And to be perfectly frank, I was the only brown skinned kid around. There was a couple of other families around, but in my school, I was the only kid in the school who wasn't white. They would say things and I didn't quite know what was going on. I knew I was different, so that created all sorts of dynamics. But as a, you know, three, four, five, six year old, you know, you, you don't understand that stuff to the fully. You can't quite articulate it. So you're just in the middle of this experience of being a little bit different and not um, maybe feeling vulnerable. I felt vulnerable a lot as a kid. Yeah, I mean, we've got around 10,000 people on the housing waiting list now. So yeah, inevitably, I mean, this is one of our flagship crises in Bristol, not just because of, you know, individual family tragedy, but as a city, you cannot be a viable city unless people can live there. I'm under no illusions. I don't think I have a switch that we can do. We set us off a real challenge, which is around build, getting us to the capacity of building 2,000 homes a year by 2020, at least 800 affordable. We know it's a stretch challenge. We know the city council can't deliver that alone. It's gonna take us working with private developers, housing associations, self builds you know, community land trusts and so forth. We want people to invest, but we clearly want something. We want affordable homes. It means there's many sets of mix of uh, social rents, council housing as well, uh, we're making sure that there's a mix of part rent, part buy. We are very serious about this. We've taken public land off the open market to make sure it doesn't just become a source of speculation. Uh, you know, we, we may be bringing some housing back into public ownership. There's all sorts of things we're doing at the moment that says that there's a, there's a change in ethos. My best moment is a housing moment, actually. Um, I'm almost reluctant to share. I'll share it because it was generally. I left Temple Street uh, one Friday night. It was about 6.30 and there was a woman outside with a push chair and four bags, one suitcase. And I looked over and I couldn't work out what was going on. She was standing outside the advice center. It was closed. And I went around, I got my bike and I came back and I saw her and I saw she was crying. And I went over, I said, what's the matter? And she said, um, I've got nowhere to, I don't know what to do. It's closed, I've got nowhere to go. And uh, people were trying to tell her to go off to Birmingham. She'd been in the Premier Inn because she had no home. Uh, she had a baby. And uh, they were telling her to go to Birmingham. So I'd been a mayor for about three weeks. I got on the phone. I called up my strategic director. She phoned the head of housing. He phoned an officer. They came down. They opened up the advice. They took her in. We carried her bags in. As I picked up two of her bags to carry them in, I could hear cutlery chinkling around. So she had everything with her, right? Including a child. And um, after about 10 minutes, we were talking to her and she was crying not crying sobbing just crying that deep just what the who the heck what do i do they, they said to me oh you can go now marvin and i said all right they said we'll take care of it an hour and a half later i got a text saying we found her somewhere for the night and i thought wow you know that's not mass scale but it was done and that's the privilege of the role right i'm not saying you can't go and solve every individual case like that it's not possible but now and again you get the moment and and i i end up identified with that woman because i because as a child, I felt that vulnerability, right? Down here and sometimes waiting to catch the bus at night with my mum and the two of us standing on a, on a bus stop in the, you know, in a cold winter evening in the dark. I felt that vulnerability and we dealt with it. You know, so that's one of my best moments.